For the past several years, I have been traveling the Midwest looking for kick-ass bands and quality venues that you need to know about. I am Jeremy Schindorf, and this is That Local Metal Show. Hello everybody, I am Jeremy Schindorf of the NWO Metal Militia, and we are here for our pilot episode of That Local Metal Show. The past several years I've been traveling all over Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, West Virginia, parts of Kentucky, all over Michigan, and some of Indiana, trying to find local talent that nobody talks about. Everybody talks about the Panteras and the Metallicas and Black Sabbaths and all that, and those are great. That's where I came from. But now, I want to give a voice to the little guy, the one that no one talks about, the one that needs to, to get out there and let people know that, hey, come out to our shows, buy our merch, listen to this album, because I have to tell you, the best music in the world is still being made. It did not die generations ago. It's being made in your very backyard, in somebody's basement. It's happening right now, and we want you all to be part of it. This is That Local Metal all right, and I would like to introduce you to my co-host. Boo! What? Boo! Hey, we're inside. Um, why are you wearing sunglasses? Pilot episode. <laughs> Aviator. Um, everybody, this is my great friend and my co-host. This is James Book Earl from Moojaw Creek, a great little band out of Toledo, Ohio. I <laughs> Well, I, I would like to uh, talk about our first guest, the, being the pilot episode, one of my very favorite bands that I found in a very small bar in East Cleveland, playing the most phenomenal combination of Deep Purple-ish, Blue Cheer, Black Sabbath, of course. I couldn't put my finger on it. I fell in love with this band the first time I heard the three-part harmony, and it just exudes everything I've been trying to preach to everyone. This band is everything that I love. They recently have signed to Metal Blade Records. Their name is Brimstone Coven, and they've just recently rela released an awesome masterpiece called Black Magic, and I would like to show the video. So here we are with Brimstone Coven's Black Magic. Stone Coven with their latest Black Magic. Now I would like to introduce you to the beings themselves. This is Wheeling, West Virginia's Brimstone Coven. How are you, brother? How are you? I'm wonderful. Good to see you. I'm chopped How's everybody really doing? Oh, I thought you'd be taller. <laughs> So how are we today, gentlemen? Doing well. Yeah. Doing well. Thank you for having us. I couldn't be happier. Uh, the show was was phenomenal, as always. Thank you. Every time I see you, and I've seen you well over a dozen times, it always gets tighter. It always gets deeper, and the lyrics consume me. Everything. 
I've professed about my love for you guys for well over a year now, and being that we've all become friends and you've welcomed me into your homes, I, I can't express my love for, for you guys as, as human beings, not just artists, not, as, not just musicians. But, and so, we you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. For sure. Love you, brother. Love you right back, man. Um, Thanks you for all breakfast, know, by the way. Absolutely. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for making the trek up to our flat land. There's yeah, no hills really or good. curves up here to speak of compared to what That's you guys right. are used to. That's a lot of corn. A lot of corn. Absolutely a lot of corn. I like corn. <laughs> Me too. So let, let's talk about the video. Where, um, well, how long has that been out now? It's, it's been a little while. Yeah. Well, we're going on a year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. about a year. a year. Where did you shoot it at? In our uh, rehearsal space? Yeah, basically where we rehearse. Below the tattoo shop? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. Hot Rod Tattoos there? Yep. Right. Martin's Ferry? Hot Rod Tattooing, yeah. Um, Tom Fitzgerald filmed it. Um, he did some filming for us uh, a few years prior and uh, did a really great job for uh, way less money than what he should have. <laughs> um, so uh, obviously nice that was a bit of an incentive to hire him again, but no, he's a, he's a, a great videographer, a great editor. and. Um, Plus, um, just because of uh, he's you know about our age, he knows what we wanted it to look old and creepy and yeah, seventies like. Right. So he knew we didn't have to explain to him what we wanted him to look, what wanted the video to look like. So um, it was easy, man. Uh, we just explained the concept to him, and we set up two different sets: one for rehearsal, like the rehearsal side; one for the the ritual side, and uh, yeah. went at it. And I think it was what two days or something, two days yeah. of shooting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, uh, to go back to when I had first met you all was at the Beachland Ballroom in, in way East Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of spoke a little bit earlier on it, but I went to see a friend's band. And I could not remember the name of your band. The whole way there, people are like, who are you going to see tonight? I'm like, Brickstone Oven, nah. <laughs> Big Girl Loving. Brick. So I don't remember exactly <laughs> what their name is. That's I a good one. I haven't it. heard that one yet. It's so funny to me because now it's, <laughs> it's common vocabulary for me. I, I, sure. I can't even begin to imagine how many times I've said y'all's name, right on. or Yin's name, or I don't know how that works in the hills. Yeah, we're Yinzers. It's Yinzers? Like, yeah. But yeah, that was, that, that was late July of 15, and, and my, my musical life changed from that point on, and you have taken me down, the, like the very next week I went to Columbus, Ohio, and caught you at the space bar with Mississippi Bones and Neon Warship uh, and yeah. all those guys, so that just that opened up this whole too. new, and then the very next night was down in McMacken and uh, Goodfellas, and it's given me a whole new area to go to, because I hadn't went down to Wheeling for any shows before, mm. and I've been professing to him for, well, him and all my cronies for oh, yeah. quite some time, quite turned some him time. onto it. And, it's a cool and, little scene down there, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the mountain metal in the valley is, is something phenomenal. So you guys are signed to Metal Blade Records. Correct. Uh, what, since 20... 15, beginning of 2015. Yeah. 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 Um, so, whatever, we're keeping up on two years now. Um, that was strange, the way that, that all that went down. But um, Tell us about it. It's, uh, it was a Christmas present. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a fairy tale story, and it, like, it's kind of unbelievable, but it did really happen this way. Uh, we weren't even, like, we were in the preparation mode to, like, get press kits together and mail them all out. We were compiling lists for labels and. Um, getting all our merch together to get ready to send out, and, but we hadn't mailed anything out yet. And um, it was Christmas time, and uh, Christmas morning, John um, forwards me this message and says, hey man, is this for real? And um, it was a, a guy named Alan Avril, and uh, he said, hey, this is Alan Avril from Metal Blade slash Poison Tongue Records. Um, we want to know if you're signed, and if you're not, if you're interested in talking about it. <laughs> and uh, of course, you're like, what? I, I had to Google Alan Avril to see. I was like, is this for real? <laughs> it's um, legit. Yeah, yeah, he asked me about it, and I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this is, I don't. This is weird. Right. Yeah, I, I would know Brian Slagle's name. That I would yeah. know that name and no other. Absolutely. Well, and Alan is Irish. Like, um, he's in a, a band called Primordial from Ireland, and um, uh, so we started talking. And here the. Uh, the way it turned out, the way he found us in the beginning was uh, we're friends with a band called Argus from Franklin, Pennsylvania. And uh, they were doing a European tour uh, and they played in Dublin and they were playing this pub in Dublin and Alan was there and took a shine to them and started talking to them about a deal. Uh, well, they were already signed. They were signed to a, a, an Italian label named Cruz del Sur Records. Okay. And um, I think contractually they were obligated to the label they were on, so they couldn't do anything with Metal Blade. So the singer, 
good friend of ours, Butch, uh, said, well, if you can't work, work with us, um, you need to check out my buddy's band, Brimstone Coven. They're awesome. And you know how that goes. And mm-hmm. right. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and Butch was aggressive and was on his back like every couple of weeks. Like, hey, did you check them out? They're awesome. You need to check them out. You need to check them out. And finally he did. And obviously he took shine to us too. And um, yeah, the rest is history. Um, yeah, but very, very fairy tale. We received that on Christmas morning. That um, is. I yeah. mean, you being an artist, I mean, could you imagine somebody calling you and say, hey, would you like to sign with I, was, label? I really couldn't. Like, how, for you guys, what, I mean, what went through your minds when you were like, well, it was wow, this really happened. Bullshit. Like, well, that's what I thought. <laughs> and um, bullshit. I mean, my first thought was, this is awesome. We can't do it because you, you don't. You don't realize what's what's entailed. You think a big label like that, they're going to be like, okay, well, you're signed now. You're going on this tour. Go, 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 That's go. where you're going around the world or whatever. Sure. And, uh, you know, uh, so th- obviously when he got a hold of us, that was the first thing I laid on the table was like, well, look, um, if that's the case and you want to throw us in a van and send us all around, like, we really can't do that full time. We've all sure. got wives and lives and kids and bills that don't pay themselves. Like, we just can't do this. Um, so if that's what you want out of us, I'm sorry, but that's a deal breaker. And um, <coughs> thankfully, they said, no, that's not the case at all. You can tour as much as you want. You can tour as little as you want. Um, you know, just know, you know, as the, the more time you spend in the back of that van, you know, that's definitely going to have an impact on sure. your popularity and, how, you know, how fast you grow. Um, so uh, that was uh, obviously a load off our minds. Um, but... Uh, for being such a big label, they're very, uh, very cooperative. They're very uh, artist friendly, and uh, they all the things that I thought a label would enforce upon an artist, um, they don't do. Like they, they, yeah. they awesome. let you do your thing. Yeah, awesome. they totally let you do your thing. Um, you know, it, it is a big label, and it is kind of a corporate entity, so you have to go through the the right avenues to write talk to the right people to ask the right questions or right. whatever. Um, but besides that, man, it, like I said, it's, it's like a big family. And uh, they really, they don't enforce anything on you that, uh, that you wouldn't want to do yourself. Now, when you guys, when you guys write, is there like one main vein? Like, does one of you guys come It's all him, of man. Them? Yeah. Awesome. Definitely all okay. him. Well, um, I mean, you wrote The Sears. The Sears. 99. And, we'll say and 99%. Andrew writes um, some of the lyrics, too, like, uh, like, uh, Black, Black unicorn, unicorn. Okay. You know, the ancients. Mm. Excellent. Like sometimes I'll just get like, uh, you know, something that's like a little. Seems like he's the ones that are like a little more rock and roll than mm-hmm. than creepy. Um, <laughs> that I have a hard time like thinking what to write for it. You know, so right, right. Andrew, but Andrew handles it. Generally speaking, though, um, Corey will compose everything. Normally, he'll come to us with a finished demo. Um, he uh, does the drums, that's the bass, awesome. guitars. Vocals, harmonies, all that stuff. It says here, here's a song. Change what you want about it. You know, whatever department you may be in. And um, nine times out of ten, we listen to it and we're like, this is awesome. It's perfect, and we're not going to change a thing. We're just going to replicate what you did. So um, that's normally the songwriting process. Um, it was. It's it's pretty rare for me to contribute anything. I think uh, Black Unicorn. There was. Uh, he gave me a a CD with a bunch of demo stuff on it, and Black Unicorn was like at the end, and it wasn't even a full song or something. It was like a partial song. Um, with no words on it, and I, it immediately, like, struck a chord. Um, and as soon as I heard it, I was like, what is this, man? And he's like, oh, I don't know, it's just an idea. Um, I don't have any words for it or anything. I'm like, I do. I, do. Yeah. I hear a pattern, like, right right out of the gate. Um, do you care? I don't want to step on your toes. He's like, yeah, yeah, totally. So um, that's how that came about. And uh, the Sears is, was all me, I think, yeah. right now. So, Andrew, you own Sacred Sound Studios there in I Martin's Ferry. Yeah, now, modest little, modest little basement studio. I know you've got so many other albums that you've recorded out of there and so many bands that I've talked to have recorded oh, yeah. things in there. Were both of those albums recorded at Sacred yes. Sound? Mm-hmm. Yep. Everything that, we've done thus far has been done. Everything mastered there yep. or? Well, Start to finish. Didn't yep. go to the West Coast or anything. Nope. It all stayed. Yeah. That's to why it's so witchy and you can feel the, <laughs> the evil drip off of it. Right. Right. Well, that's, we another, just, that's another thing that's cool about the label too is they're, they're totally fine with that. They, they dig how it sounds in there. Yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. It, Metal Blade, props to Metal Blade for yeah, that. I mean, right. Not trying to change you. Yeah, they're super cool about mm-hmm. that. Let yeah. you be comfortable with what you know and, and, and whatnot. And it's complimentary to... Uh, to hear that, yeah, we like your product, you know, enough that we want to put our name on it. We don't want you to change anything. Yeah, you know? I can't say enough how I, I respect Metal Blade for not 
changing anything with you guys. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I don't know if I'd be the fan that I am if it were different. Right on. Indeed. You still have the sunglasses on. It's a pilot episode. I don't understand like... what you don't... <laughs> Whatever, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> this guy, I don't, know, I don't even know why no, he says like pirate this. episode. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. supposed to wear an eye patch and you're wearing eight. Well, years. I didn't know it was that kind of party. <laughs> <laughs> party. Uh, yar. If you guys, if you guys could, you know, everything's all the stars line up and everything. If you had any bands that you could go on tour with now, that like from your group of you know, uh, select musicians around your area, who who would it be? Oh man, mm. um, wow. Doctor Smoke, definitely yeah. Doctor Smoke, Dr. number one. Smoke. Um, man, Lady Beast, Lady Wait, Beast yeah. is rad, and I would totally love to tour with Lady, Lady Beast. Beast. I was saying yeah, last yeah, night I have to check them that out. I would follow Lady Beast around just to sell their merch. <laughs> like, I would, like I love those guys that was, much. Like I would just drive around with you guys and sell your merch. What was the band that played at um, when we came back off a tour in Pittsburgh and we played with um, the, the the shaved head dude? They were real creepy and crazy. The name of that band. What was the venue? At at the Howlers. It was us, Molasses Barge, and this wizard band. Oh, 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 oh. The wizard they were awesome. See, now I'm on the spot and I can't think. Yeah, I can't think of the band. That's that terrible. It must be a new subgenre. <laughs> Blizzaro? Blizzaro. Yes. Blizzaro. Yeah, they were, Blizzaro. They were oh, really awesome. creepy. Yeah. yeah, really cool. Mm -hmm. Just, really? I mean, quirky. Do me, cool. witchy. Yeah, yeah. All, all the good yeah. stuff. All it's the stuff like, I love. Um, yeah. Uh, very Candlemass ish, yeah, okay. but um, like I guess vocally it's Candlemass ish, but uh, musically it's way more like your traditional what you would call stoner Sabbath worship type stuff. It's yeah. really cool. You though. would dig it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right up your Just alley. everything yeah. I love, you just said it yep. in one sentence. Yep. No, those guys were rad. Yeah. yeah. Now, when you played the, the show in Toledo for me, you guys were ramping up to meet up with Castle mm. in Chicago. How yep. was that? That was like a nine date? Yeah. Yeah. Like Around the Midwest. Yeah. It was awesome. Mm, those guys. Uh, you want to talk about a, a, a group of consummate professionals, those yeah. guys. Uh, just totally family-oriented guys. Um, and, you know, we played some shows that had real good turnouts and not so good turnouts. And uh, what uh, dictates a professional band to me is those guys brought the same show no matter yep. yeah, how many people or how few people were there. It was just whether there was three or 300 they delivered the same exact stellar performance every time. The greats time. do that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because I've seen you guys play in front of a full room, and I've seen a, a sparser crowd, and it's never been any weaker. Or it, Each show just gets better and better. Oh, well, thanks. And I, I try not to be a critic, but I am very critical. I, I, I've seen you guys so many times, and I know backstories and, and things that are happening positive and negative in people's lives and everything. Sure. It's all gone on the stage. Mm -hmm. You That's become rock stars on the stage. But you're just Andrew any other time. Yeah. It's therapy up there. You know? That's it's what it therapy is. for us, yeah, too. So <laughs> exercising those demons. You, you know? guys feed us, and, and we feed you back with oh, the yeah. fists in the air. No, it's definitely oh, yeah. reciprocal. All right. Well, we're going to go to break right now. Thank you guys very much. And, Thank you. Uh, we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Brimstone Coven. See you in a minute. This next one's on our new album. You can get right over here. Black Unicorn.
That should have said everything that I've been professing for how long now. I don't have to say anything else. That did it for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my God. You guys are quite phenomenal every Thank time. You. Thank you. Ridiculous. I can't wait to see where the, this all takes you guys. I, it's perfection. To these ears, it's perfection. There's not one filler I've ever seen you guys go, oh, this is where they do slow down. There. No, that's <laughs> slow down. I get the little dance go over. So I got a different dance for every song. And, but they all seem to culminate to this face every time. So. Nice. Well, thank you. Very, very cool stuff, man. Thank you guys so much. Mm -hmm. oh, it's our and the, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. It takes my breath every time. You, right on, man. You're too kind. Just stop. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you want to, the dog hump in the leg, you know? Yeah. Right, you know, well, you just let him usually stop when he's done. Yeah, yeah let, let him finish. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you got it. John doesn't matter. It's <laughs> fine. So, uh, do you have any questions for the stoners? Well, I just, uh, you know, do you have any advice for bands out there actually trying to make a name for themselves and, and get to the point where you guys have got thus far, you know, with being signed and. I uh, think that, um, for yourself. well, you know, a band's only going to work if you've got the chemistry to begin with, you know, and um, I think that you need to be, you know, once you're in bands for so long, you realize, and, and you can realize pretty much right off the bat when you get together with a group of guys, whether the chemistry is there or it's not, um, you know, uh, synthesize that, get your winning team happening, um, and once you got that, just stay motivated, stay uh, communicative, um, stay on the same page, and uh, also, you know, try and be as uh, self-reliant as possible because, you know, number one, it's going to work for you. Number two, um, anybody that might pick you up down the line is going to appreciate that in you. They're looking for people that are self-reliant and bands that don't need to be carried and, right. and have their hand held through the whole process. Absolutely. Don't read the comments. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't that's read. Cool. Don't Google your name. Don't right. listen. To... Yep. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, and that's funny. You brought that up. I, I've read so many reviews that are stellar, which they should be. And then there's always the the one troll. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And I get mad. It's like I want to call you and go. Did you see? But <laughs> <laughs> keyboard warrior in grandma's basement. Yeah. 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 Everybody's a tough guy. Well, yeah, and everybody's man. got an opinion, and they're entitled to it. And yeah. so, like, there are some trolls that just talk for the sake of talking. And right. Absolutely. You know, there's are there always going to be that peop those people. But um, you know, yeah, I don't take any stock into anyone's opinion but our own. You know. Um, so yeah, that that's a valuable lesson too. Don't don't take. Um, outside opinions too much to heart. So awesome. when, when Brimstone formed, how, what was the lineup? I mean, how, how did the auditioning process go along? Well, he, um, Corey came up with the concept for it, um, 2011. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think you had already assembled John and Justin um, by that point and came to me and uh, said, so um, I'm looking for a vocalist for this project, man. Um, check it out, I got this song. Um, demo vocals, I think, I think you're the man for it. And I said, okay. And I listened to it. The song was killer. It ended up being the Ancients, 
was the song in question here, but um, I did demo vocals for it, and uh, I gave it back to him. I was like, here you go, man. Like, I, I, I did stuff for this, and like, it's okay, but I don't think I'm the guy. Um, like, I, I have a, a more of a traditional heavy metal vocal. Yeah, like, uh, Iron Maiden Dickinson, yeah, Dio type stuff. And, um, it just, it, it didn't mesh as well as I think it could have. Um, so, here you go, man. He said, well, I, I don't know. I, I've, I have John on, on bass. I said, did you ever hear John sing? John's got pipes, man. Um, <laughs> get, try John out for singing, and I'll, I'll play bass. Let's we'll see how that works. Um, so we did that, and as soon as we did that, it was just, just yeah. clicked. And yeah, I, I fired John <laughs> yeah. as a bass came player. up to me. He was like, listen, I don't want you to play bass anymore. And I was like, screw you. <laughs> He's like, I want Andrew to play bass. Well, screw him, too. <laughs> I want you to sing. All right, that's cool. <laughs> so yeah, it worked and out. sing you do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. out. I try. <laughs> Very well. Well, we're gonna move on to the segment of the show where we're gonna talk to the audience a little bit. So cool. Want to thank you guys again so much Ooh, for being here with us. Thank you, man. Thanks. We're gonna have a little fun with this. So it's a good-looking audience, by the way. Absolutely. Mm. Some lucky person is gonna walk away with this grab bag of way cool brimstone stuff. Uh, let's see, who am I gonna pick? How about this, is it a took too much shirt you're wearing? And what is your name, young lady? My name is Jana Powell. Okay, Jana, well, I'm going to give you a trivia question and you're gonna give me the answer. Yes. So, Big John has a tattoo on his left arm of A, Wilt Chamberlain socks, B, an original NES controller, or C, the Jackson 5? No, that's incorrect. It actually is the Jackson 5. But here, here's a bag of stuff. All right. Now, uh, Book, do you have a bag of stuff and a question? <clears throat> I do believe I, I got a little something here. All right. <clears throat> In here, we got... Uh, Little Megaton Hammer swag, a uh, nice T-shirt. Their uh, EP I Am Error, uh, I Am Error sticker, and a nice uh, Scaldo, that local metal show koozie. And let's see here. This dude just scares me. I'm staying away from him. Uh, let's see. You, sir. What's your name? Greg. All right. Now, <clears throat> Andrew, he owns a company that does A, lawn and landscaping, B, does tattoos, or C, repairs wigs for homeless clowns. B. Nope. He actually owns a uh, repair shop for homeless clowns' wigs. Really interesting. Here he goes. Yeah. Right, this is the last segment of the show. We would like to talk about what's on our radar. And mine, I was in Indianapolis, Indiana at the fifth quarter that we had talked about. And it, was, it happened to be a brimstone show, but there was a band that totally caught my eye. And their name is Void King. And they are a great doomy band out of Indianapolis, Indianapolis slash Muncie area. Really, really great stuff. They got this way cool retro cassette, and they've got it out on uh, CD as well. And around Christmas time, they plan on putting this album out on vinyl. And it's some great, great sound, great, awesome vocals on top of some doomy stuff. Very similar to uh, Brimstone Coven, but their own, their own thing. So that's what's on my radar. Check out Void King, Indianapolis. What do you got, Boop? Um, actually, is Megaton Hammer. The delightful three-piece of Toledo that I just gave away the prize pack for. They, uh, they have an awesome selection of shirts, EP out, four songs. It's called I Am Error. Got to check it out. If you never listen to Megaton Hammer, do yourself a favor and check it out. All right. Well, thank you very much for tuning in and watching this pilot episode of That Local Metal Show, and we will see you soon, malcontents.